Oh, I think that's very revealing. Uh, it showed that NO, nitric oxide radical, is terribly immunosuppressive. But interestingly enough, all of the literature on NO, and I follow, follow it rather carefully uh, to, uh, by computer, never mentions amyl butyl nitrite, never mentions the word poppers. It's as almost these two worlds are living side by side, but they don't, are not talking to each other. Another possible cause of AIDS among homosexuals and heterosexuals as well is the infection that occurs during anal sex. The tissue lining in the rectum is permeable and only one layer thick. Unlike the vagina, which is three layers thick, the rectum cannot accommodate the abrasive thrusting that takes place during anal sex. Through the tears in this lining, foreign proteins found in semen along with viruses and bacteria have a direct route to the blood. Contamination from feces and bacteria have been blamed for what is called gay bowel syndrome, where the colon and rectum become inflamed, accompanied by diarrhea, loss of bowel control, and malnutrition. Also, foreign proteins found in sperm have been shown to be immunosuppressive. It's been suggested that when they enter the blood, they could trigger an autoimmune reaction, where the body's immune system turns upon itself. Small cuts and sores on the penis are routes by which infection spreads to the person on the giving end. Using a condom during anal sex can reduce the risk of foreign proteins infecting the blood, but often the condom, even when it works properly, still tears the rectal lining and exposes the recipient to chemicals used as lubricants. Many gay AIDS patients have multiple infections of gonorrhea, syphilis, hepatitis, herpes, cytomegalovirus, and other diseases. To combat these repeated infections, homosexuals often take huge amounts of antibiotics during bathhouse visits along with other drugs. These antibiotic overdoses also wear down the immune system. There's no doubt that homosexuals are contracting many of these opportunistic AIDS diseases sexually. But is this the cause of AIDS? Or simply put, are gays getting AIDS because of homosexual behavior? Or is it caused by drugs used commonly in connection with the gay lifestyle? Peter Duisberg points out that the number of homosexuals getting AIDS amounts to only a very small percentage of the entire gay population. So we're talking about a very small percentage of the homosexual population that is, that is, that is practicing this lifestyle, taking these drugs for sex. Those are the ones who are at risk, not homosexuals. Homosexuals, again, are as old as mankind is. Uh, Michelangelo was, Socrates was, Tchaikovsky was, and they all lived uh, without AIDS, normal lives. Duisberg argues that if the war on AIDS focused upon drugs used in the gay lifestyle instead of HIV, we could save thousands of lives. We have over 100,000 studies on HIV and AIDS, and there isn't one, there is not uno epidemiological study that has shown that a group of I go as low as 10 or 20 men, homosexuals, heterosexual, doesn't matter, HIV positive, but not using poppers, not using cocaine, not using heroin, and not using AZT ever gets AIDS. Ever gets Kaposi sarcoma, tuberculosis, dementia, or diarrhea at the age of 25 or 35, where these men die when they take the drugs and have HIV. Why is there no such study? I think the answer is very simple, because HIV doesn't do it. It's the drugs that are doing it. So if recreational drug use can explain 9 out of 10 AIDS cases among homosexuals and drug addicts, what the other 10%, such as people with medical risks like blood transfusion patients and hemophiliacs? The risk in receiving blood is well known, and it should be no surprise that transfusion patients often develop AIDS symptoms. Because of the life-threatening conditions that require transfusions, almost 50% of all transfusion patients die within a year after receiving blood. In those that survive, their immunosuppression directly corresponds with how much blood they receive, the condition of their illness, and factors affecting their health regardless of whether they are infected with HIV. Hemophiliacs receive injections of blood clotting factor 8 made from thousands of blood donors. Before blood was tested for HIV, many were infected with the virus and some developed AIDS. Yet some of the most revealing contradictions against HIV can be observed among this special group. For years, Dr. Duisberg has argued that HIV is not causing AIDS in hemophiliacs, and his research indicates what is. Foreign proteins found in clotting factor 8 that can be shown to have a measured dose response towards suppressing immunity in hemophiliacs. Almost 75% of American hemophiliacs are infected with HIV. 
Yet the lifespan of hemophiliacs as a group has increased by 15 years during the AIDS epidemic. So hemophiliacs are living longer than ever before in history with HIV. In fact, hemophiliacs with HIV develop AIDS at a slower rate than IV drug users and homosexuals. A recent study conducted by Sarah Darby at Oxford tracked death rates among British hemophiliacs between 1977 through 1992. The Darby study concluded that HIV-infected hemophiliacs were dying at a much faster rate, which supports the HIV hypothesis. But under scrutiny, the Darby study falls apart. The trouble is with the Darby experiment is that they did not control for the magnitude and uh, amount of foreign proteins that were being received by these hemophiliacs. So it's impossible to determine whether HIV or foreign proteins in factor are increasing the death rates. Since HIV rarely contaminates factor VIII, those hemophiliacs infected with the virus would have the highest number of infusions of the factor and should be expected to develop AIDS faster. But the most alarming observation about Darby's study delivers a crowning blow to the HIV hypothesis, followed by a frightening realization. The data clearly indicates that the HIV hypothesis itself is causing AIDS. Look closely at the death rates. Even though many hemophiliacs had been infected with HIV for years before it could be detected, their mortality rate remained low. But when HIV testing was introduced in 1985, it suddenly jumped. The question is, why would someone living with HIV only start to die after being told they were infected, unless the virus is harmless and it can only cause AIDS when a patient is terrorized by a diagnosis of death and begins taking deadly antiviral treatments like AZT that could cause AIDS themselves. The Darby study scientifically documents the HIV AIDS formula for mass medical disaster, a failed hypothesis that spawns a misdiagnosis of death and terrorizes the unwary into taking deadly treatments that cause the theoretical disease, a self-fulfilling epitaph, HIV causes AIDS. AZT, AIDS, Prescription. In 1987, the war on AIDS took another drastic turn for the worse. AZT, a toxic chemotherapy deemed too poisonous for cancer treatment, was approved to treat symptomatic and asymptomatic HIV patients in an attempt to kill the virus that causes AIDS. AZT is a DNA chain terminator, a poison designed to randomly destroy the DNA synthesis of reproducing cells. It was initially developed to treat leukemia victims, but after animal testing, the FDA determined that it was too toxic for use in human beings and banned it. But in 1987, when the AIDS scare hit its height, the FDA was pressured into approving the drug for use for the first time in human beings, even for people who were healthy and showed no sign of AIDS. AZT is highly mutagenic, meaning that it destroys the genes and cells and has been shown to cause cancer in rodents. It targets the bone marrow, where B lymphocyte blood cells are being made. These are the very cells an AIDS patient needs most for immunity. AZT destroys randomly bone marrow, kidneys, liver, intestines, muscle tissue, the brain, and central nervous system. Peter Duesberg claims AZT actually causes AIDS itself. AZT deaths does directly causing AIDS uh, defining diseases. You know, AIDS is a lot of the things, but it doesn't cause Kaposi sarcoma, I think but it does cause immunodeficiency. It was designed to do that. It was designed to kill human cells. In fact, the manufacturer says that uh, specifically that it can cause uh, AIDS -like diseases. The manufacturer, that is Boris Welcome, says it is often difficult to distinguish adverse events possibly associated with cedovudine or cedovudin administration, which is ACT, from underlying signs of HIV disease. In other words, even they acknowledge, not just this book, that, CDV, uh, that AZT causes AIDS or AIDS-defining diseases. 